Producing Pupils. This is a One School for All lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, at Ustfold University College. Um, and I would like you to watch my students. I would like you to watch this by the 7th of November when we next meet. So we've talked about this, that the aim of our work as teachers is to produce pupils. And as with brains, we can't really sign out of that. Whether you like it or not, that is what we are doing. And we don't necessarily like that description of it, but, but it's the task. We are also educating for freedom. We're educating citizens. And in a way, people, the phrase has gone viral in the past few years. Um, the quotation from Black Panther, Asata Shaka, no one is going to give you the education you need to overthrow them. But it is also true that we are educating for freedom. And I wish I could tell you how to do that, to um, get people into a classroom, um, to get them to do what you want them to do, but also to learn to ignore your advice or to ignore all the things that other people force them to do or ask them to do. To, on the one hand, ask for obedient pupils so that in time they will learn to be disobedient or to know when to disobey the law. So um, I'm not going to tell you how to do that because I don't really know, but I'm going to tell you about some um, blind alleys. Um, so I'm going to tell you how I live. This is my um, this is my email account. As you can tell, I've got some um, problems with spam. Um, but this is also how I organize my life, as you see. Um, things come into my inbox here and um, and more things than I really would care to have. Um, and when one of them requires actions, I turn it into a, um, a task up here. Read the mail from FedEx. And then I will give it a time when I'm going to um, be available. At the moment, I'm not very av available. So maybe I then have to go to my calendar and put in another um, calendar event here, read emails. 12 o'clock this afternoon, I will then get a, um, get a little um, reminder that this is what I have to do. And this is a system that I have learned that I have developed myself um, based on um, having been taught various things, having read various self-help manuals and things like that. This is what I do. And it gives me happiness in the sense that when I am not working, I know that I'm not forgetting things either. I know that I there isn't anything that's just about to explode in my work life because everything that I've been asked to do, everything people expect me to do, has been written down somewhere and I can pay attention to that and as you see I've got a little bit too many things to do at the moment that, um, today but um, but I'm sure I'll deal with it and at the end of the day I can always um, put it off for another day these things don't disappear so this probably makes me a very effective co-worker and I'm sure my boss likes the fact that I do this um, and like I say I do it so that I have control over my own life it makes me happy it makes me free um, it makes me um, feel like things aren't just um, getting ahead of me that I, I'm, I'm in control of what I do but what I've had to learn to do is not just use these tools, but I've got to mold my brain into a shape that it reacts to Microsoft Outlook Express, that it reacts to the kind of things, the notifications that I've asked it to do. And we can all go into our phones or our computers and ask it to give us notifications about certain things. And perhaps um, that way of saying it, when I say molding my brain, that itself reacts something in your brain. Maybe that makes you think, ah, he's referring back to Catherine Malibu's work on uh, what should we do with our brains. I hope you do recognize that phrase. Um, because Malibu's understanding of plasticity is a matter of changing my brain to whatever purpose or habit I want. But it's also... Um, when I do it like this, I'm adapting my brain to something else. Like I say, I make myself effective. I have a purpose in doing this. I, it's self-serving. It's in, it's in the interest of Andrew. Um, but it's also uh, molding it in the shape of Microsoft. It's not in the interests of um, 
Mr. Gates and uh, all his co-workers. But it's definitely um, molding my brain into the shape that he has basically uh, um, established. But it feels like I'm becoming more free. It feels like I'm, um, I'm changing myself for my own interests, but at the same time fitting myself into a pre-established matrix. I want you to notice that pattern because it's a pattern we see again and again in school and in literature about school. In order to get pupils to fulfill our national curriculum requirements, they have to manage themselves, they have to determine themselves, they have to control themselves, they have to regulate themselves. Um, and all of these are really key words in our contemporary pedagogical conversation. And when you hear that, them, and I am sure you will hear them again in your teacher training from other people, from other sources. When you hear these phrases, I want you to think of this brain in the box pattern. Um, and I want you to ask yourself, am I giving my pupils the tools to overthrow me? Melissa Gregg in this book, Counterproductive, that I've set up as the reading list for this week, she does this great job of describing this kind of self-regulation in the public square, not necessarily specifically for schools. She describes self-help literature and effectiveness literature historically rather than just philosophically or politically or psychologically. And she links it to asceticism. So uh, what we see St. Anthony doing here in Salvador Dali's famous um, piece of work, controlling himself. She links it to, um, to discipline and self-discipline. And it's an interesting point, and it gives us a new analogy for education. Um, pedagogy, not as socialization, um, not as information, but as monasticism or pedagogy as martial arts. And as ever, I'm not saying you should be frightened of asceticism or this view of education. I don't, I'm not saying it's evil, this way of thinking about education. Doubtless those working in self-determination theory, such as Decky and Ryan, as you see on this reading list here, not on, on your reading list, but I think it's an interesting article to read one day. Uh, they would be uncomfortable with this idea that I'm talking about of relating um, their way of conceptualizing education with St. Anthony. Um, but I think it's just part of the game. I think it's just what education is about, whether we like it or not. But if you associate um, education with monasticism with um, and therefore with martial arts, and if that triggers off some thoughts of manipulation and discipline in your brain, well, that's probably a good thing. Because as a teacher, I want you never to lose sight of your responsibility in other people's lives and the enormous power you have in shaping their future.